Hi, I'm Scott Thornton, Public Cloud Consulting Engineer. During this recording, we are going to discuss the basics to getting started on Azure with the Palo Alto Networks VM Series Next Generation Firewall. We will conclude this video with a demonstration of the setup process. This video will give an overview of the Palo Alto Networks VM Series on Azure. We will also discuss the licensing model, followed by a discussion of some common deployment scenarios before we discuss the basic steps of deployment. Lastly, we will do a demonstration. Palo Alto Networks provides the most complete public cloud security offering in the marketplace. From host security with our traps to API security to complete east-west, north-south protection, we have solutions to offer for uh, today's deployments. The VM Series Firewall on Azure brings security features of Palo Alto Network's next generation firewall as a virtual machine in the Azure marketplace. The VM Series Firewall provides a complete set of security functionality to ensure that your virtual machine workloads and data are protected and the capabilities that the firewall enables are different from native security features such as security groups, web application firewalls, and native port-based firewalls. The VM Series Next Generation Firewall allows customers to securely migrate their applications and data to Azure, protecting them from known and unknown threats with application whitelisting and threat prevention policies. Uh, it's designed to facilitate fully automated deployments. The, the VM Series can be embedded into your application deployment process, which is going to allow security to keep pace with the speed of the cloud. Developers and cloud security architects can use ARM templates, Azure functions, or third-party tools combined with a VM series bootstrap configuration to create touchless deployments. Application whitelisting and segmentation policies can be dynamically updated based on workload tags, allowing you to reduce the attack surface area and achieve compliance while Threat prevention policies can block threats and stop data exfiltration. Advanced architectures based on Azure load balancers allow you to assemble scalable VM series deployments to address managed scale for inbound traffic, outbound scale combined with protecting workloads from lateral or east to west threat movement, and a transit VNet based shared architecture service that enables security and connectivity. Palo Alto Network's VM Series Firewall on Azure Cloud has a very flexible licensing options. You can either do a BYOL, a bring your own license, or you can do a pay as you go via the marketplace, or you can use a VM Series Enterprise License Agreement. The VM Series Bundle 1 is basically a next generation firewall that includes a VM300 next generation firewall license, a threat prevention subscription which includes IPS, antivirus malware prevent prevention, and premium support. The premium support provides rapid and direct access to support engineer availability for your most critical issues. It also includes regular software, content, and feature updates, as well as access to a wealth of community resources, case management, and technical documentation. Now I'm going to discuss our deployment scenario along with a few other options before we get into the demonstration. The VM series firewall on Azure can be used to secure your network in a number of different scenarios. You can use a hybrid and VNet to VNet setup where the VM series firewall on Azure allows you to securely extend your physical data center and private cloud into Azure using IPsec and Express Route. To improve your data center security, if you have segmented your network and deployed your workloads in separate VNets, you can secure traffic flowing between VNets with an IPsec tunnel and an application whitelisting policy. You can also use an inner subnet scenario, and that's the where the VM series firewall confront your servers in a VNet and protects against lateral threats for inter subnet traffic between applications in a multi-tier architecture. It can also be used as a gateway. The VM series firewall serves as the VNet gateway to protect internet facing deployments in the Azure virtual network or VNet. The VM series firewall secures traffic destined to the servers in the VNet, and it also protects against lateral threats for inter-subnet traffic between applications in a multi-tier architecture. 
the with Global Protect, you can use the Azure infrastructure to quickly and easily deploy the VM series firewall as Global Protect and extend your gateway security policy to remote users and devices regardless of their location. You can look at a basic deployment that protects both north, south, and east to west traffic in an Azure cloud. When deployed from Marketplace, a VM series virtual machine is created with multiple network interfaces. You then select an empty existing or new resource group, storage account, and VNet with three subnets, management, untrust, and trust. Once the VM series is deployed, it will need to be licensed, configured, and user-defined rules created in order to steer traffic from the trust and untrust subnets through the firewall. The VM series firewall on Azure must be deployed in a virtual network using the resource manager deployment mode. You can deploy the VM series firewall on the standard Azure public cloud, Azure government, and Azure China environments. The VM Series Firewall on Azure and Azure Government Marketplace support both the Bring Your Own License model and the hourly pay-as-you-go option, which is a usage-based licensing. For Azure China, the VM Series Firewall is available in the Bring Your Own License option only. You can also deploy the VM Series Firewall on Azure Stack, which is Microsoft's private cloud solution that enables you to use Azure services within your organization's data center. With Azure Stack, you can build out a hybrid cloud solution that unifies your public Azure deployment with your on-premise Azure Stack setup. You can download the VM Series Firewall, bring your own license offer from the Azure Marketplace, and make it available to your tenants on Azure Stack. We'll take a look at the steps required for deploying the VM Series Firewall in Azure. The first thing you're going to need is to set up an Azure account and be able to log in. If you're using a trial subscription, you may need to open a support request uh, to increase the quota of allocated VM cores that you're allowed. And if you don't already have a resource group, an unused resource group configured in your Azure cloud, now would be a good time to set one up. A resource group is a container that holds related resources for an Azure solution. The resource group can include all of the resources for the solution or only the resources that you want to manage as a group. You decide how you want to allocate your resources to resource groups based on what makes the most sense for your organization. Generally, it's best to add resources that share the same lifecycle to the same resource group so you can easily deploy, update, and delete them as a group themselves. The resource group stores metadata about the resources. Therefore, when you specify a location for the resource group, you are actually specifying where that metadata is stored. So for compliance reasons, you may need to ensure that your data is stored in a particular region, then you can handle that with resource groups. Uh, next, you wanna find the Palo Alto Networks VM series solution template in the Azure Marketplace. And this can be done by searching for Palo Alto Networks or you can browse to the security section of the marketplace and then you will see the Palo Alto Networks firewall in there. Um, the, after you begin to provision the firewall, then you'll have to configure some basic settings uh, for storage and networking. When deploying in Azure, you're able to specify your preferred username as long as it's not admin and a password, which must be 12 characters or greater, including special characters, uh, you know, uppercase, lowercase, numeric, or you can use an SSH public key. Unlike in AWS and GCP, Azure provides some flexibility there. Next up, we're gonna go through a demo and we'll step through how to set up a VM series firewall in the Azure cloud. Okay, so now we're gonna go through the demo portion and see how we can spin up a Palo Alto Networks firewall on Microsoft Azure. So this is the home screen you get to when you log into Azure. And you can get to the Palo Alto Networks firewall a couple different ways. You can, you can click on dashboard and you can browse to it and you can go to marketplace. And if you click on security, uh, you'll see the different choices of products here that you can choose from. You can also just search at the top for Palo Alto Networks and you'll get your choices between Panorama, uh, next-gen firewall and a couple different bundles. 
So I'm just going to pick bundle one and click create. The first thing we're going to do in setting up the firewall is create a username and password. I'm just going to use my name. Uh, down here you select your subscription. So in this case I'm going to select the subscription that I belong to as part of Palo Alto Networks. And here you can cr uh, select an existing resource group or you can create a new one. So we're going to create a new resource group and I'm just going to call this Scott test and say OK. And for the location you can pick from any of the locations. I happen to live in the US East region so I'm going to select that. It doesn't matter as long as uh, typically you want to set up redundant regions and, and have your uh, redundancy built into the cloud. In this case just for the demo I'm just picking that because it's close to home. Next we're going to create our storage and networking configurations. And the first thing I'm going to do is just create a storage account. I don't have one on this particular uh, in this particular resource. And next up, we're going to select virtual network and create a new one. And I'm just going to use the 10.15 address space that it gives me and say OK. And now it's time to configure your subnets. Here you're going to want to configure your management subnet and along with the subnet address and your untrust and trust. In this case, I'm just going to use the defaults and say OK. Next up, we have to set up a DNS name so that you will be able to access the firewall from the web interface. And in this case, I'm just going to say S. Thornton uh, so it differentiates me from my other colleagues. And then I'm going to give the VM a name and it's going to be Scott Test. And for the VM series version, here you can select from different versions. I'm just going to select latest. And you can decide whether or not you want to enable bootstrapping. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to enable bootstrapping just for the demonstration purposes. But if you wanted to enable bootstrap, you would have to configure your storage account name, uh, give it an asset access key, and the file share name. But we're just going to say no to this and click OK. So now we have our final validation that we can go through. After you've done your validation, you'll be taken to this screen, which is just a final agreement to the terms of your firewall, and you can come down and see your subscription information. And you're just agreeing to Microsoft's terms and setting up the firewall. The actual create process doesn't take very long, but if you click on the little bell here you can look at your notifications and your activity log and you can see that the deployment is in process you can actually click on that and follow it uh, until completion All right so now our firewall is up I'm going to go back in and set a public IP address on my untrust interface and I wasn't able to do this during the initial setup because I had to choose from Microsoft's uh, private IPs that come with the setup. So now I'm going to come in and pick an IP address. I'm going to select IP configurations and I'm going to select add. I need to enable public IP addresses and I need to create a new one from my subscription. In this case it gives me Scott Test and my name and the interface that I want to use and that's fine. I'm going to select OK and I'm going to give it a name. In this case I'm just going to call it untrust. So that doesn't take very long for Azure to complete that task. Do you set your public IP address for your untrust interface? You want to come back to uh, the IP configurations and make sure that you see the secondary interface and it has a public IP address. Now that our firewall is up and configured, I'm going to go to my DNS name under my virtual machine and log into the firewall. So in this case, I'm going to use my username that I set up earlier to log into the firewall. And you will see that it's going to create my administrative session. And just like that, you now have the most advanced next generation firewall on the planet built and running on Microsoft Azure Cloud. Thank you for taking the time to learn some basics about deploying the Palo Alto Networks firewall on Azure Cloud.